the Second Symphony of Bruckner is a little bit of a curiosity. Even the big Bruckner specialists and often the orchestras that are famous for playing Bruckner don't really play the Second Symphony that often. But I think it's, a, it's a nice to see where the origins and where his musical thinking comes from. Often I think that the early symphonies are slightly misinterpreted because they have been, they've been all slowed down, they all have a kind of a majesty that have they, they, the conductors often see them through the eyes of the mature symphony. I'd like to see them as if I never heard the third, the fourth, the fifth, the seventh, or ninth, um, as if it is just a new symphony. In the beginning, these were romantic symphonies in a, in a style of, let's say, something like Mendelssohn or, or you know, a, a, an early romantic youthful works. And it doesn't matter that he wasn't so young. The, the fact that it was he was the young as a composer and these were the idols. And so, so the, the, the kind of a, an attitude in which you approach them has to be closer to the romantic youthful romantic symphony rather than the Brucknerian kind of statement which which we later get to. Then the Philharmonic Orchestra is of course very well known for, for Bruckner. I, mean, we, I grew up listening to the Günther Mann recordings, for example. Even though probably a lot of the players from that time um, are not here anymore. The, there is a, a curious thing about orchestras. They have sort of a collective memory, the DNA, which transports and tr transfers over to the younger players and, and, and the Bruckner tradition continues. To me, to me, Bruckner is, is, is one of the greats.